Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Trade the Chain AMA. It is Friday, August 6th, and we're... Thank God. Happy- <laughs> Thank God. It is the end <laughs> of the week. So happy Friday, guys, um, in all seriousness. Uh, it's been quite an exciting week. Obviously, we dropped a, a few news bombs on you um, in the community. Uh, and because of that, we wanted to bring one of those big pieces of news. Adam from Loopring is with us. And uh, also, we're going to take a deep dive into Luna today with Tommy. uh, He's a research analyst with the tie. Tommy, actually, you could be CEO. I don't know if you took uh, Josh's job or not. So I hope I got research (laughs) analyst. Okay, definitely definitely not. (laughs) (laughs) And then, of course, we have Nick, our chief community officer, uh, who's going to go over the market commentary for this week, as well as some new exciting listings uh, that actually went live. And before we get to all of that, um, Ryan, take us away with your usual thing. Yeah, man. Thanks, Alex. Great to have everyone here for this week's AMA. Uh, This is just a reminder that all content provided by Trade the Chain, Loopring, and The Tie is strictly for educational and informational purposes only. Absolutely none of this is investment advice, and it should not be construed as such. So as Alex said, we have... Adam from from Loopring here, Tommy from The Tie. Um, Alex has some great updates on Scent, including one that I don't think we've shared yet with the community, Alex? Yeah, no, it's going to be a surprise. I think I'm not there. Yeah, Nick's research will look at uh, Bitcoin and how Capitol Hill uh, may affect ETH and ERC-20 tokens. We have a great new Discord feature we added this morning, and uh, those community highlights from Nick, I think, are going to be great as well. Before we get into it with Adams, we want to remind you that um, at the bottom of your Zoom window, you have two options for asking questions. You can go to the chat, or you can go to you can uh, hit the Q and A button and ask a question in either place, and we'll make sure we uh, we get to it as best we can during the uh, AMA. Um, but that said, uh, Adam, take it away. Well, yeah, well, let, hold on. Let me take it away yeah. for Adam. Let me okay. <laughs> so as everybody knows, we made uh, we made an announcement that um, we were, get, were getting listed on Loopring. Um, withdrawals and deposits are going to be active on m- this coming Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the reasons we wanted to have Adam on today was to kind of prep everybody. Now, there's no rush to do anything. You're not missing out on some sort of uh, great grand prize that we have if, if Monday, you on on board but we want to get you prepared anyway um so adam is here to tell us a little bit about uh loop ring uh how you know the the just basically how the whole the whole system works um it's quite unique but the important things that you need to take away are fast and cheap that's it all right so if you walk away with any knowledge fast and cheap is it adam thank you for joining us man uh yeah Thank you very much, Alex, for that intro and Ryan. Um, Yeah, we've been, I think, talking about this campaign for the past couple of weeks. So we're very excited on our side for everything to start next week, deposits to be enabled. And just to kind of go over the campaign a bit, the first 3,000 Trade the Chain users will be able to get that VIP tier three loopring access for the next 12 months. So that will be discounted taker fees, which is very nice. I, I know you guys at TTC definitely uh, like those discounted fees. As well, I think the next week we'll be starting the trade uh, sent uh, liquidity mining campaign. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of rewards on the way as well as a loop ring or LRC airdrop to the 500 most liquid uh, liquidity miners who provide liquidity to that sent USDC pool. But yeah, you guys are on for, I guess, eight rounds of liquidity mining. Should be an amazing campaign and very excited about this partnership. Adam, just to reiterate, um, the first, how many members from Trade the Chain get that, uh, that tier three access or that level three access? The first 3,000 um, trade between VIP to tier three access. So it, it, it's it's going to be heavily subsidized trading. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, for everybody who's disappointed about uh, how the London fork did not improve uh, Ethereum fees, I still don't understand why that narrative uh, was always floated around. It wasn't the point of it. But I won't harp on that any longer. But it, it's the reason why, you know, places like Loopring um exist and exist so well but let's get to the exciting part because it's one thing to be 
you know, to have a venue to to buy and sell uh, scent. But tell us a little bit more about the liquidity mining, how that's going to work and, you know, when it starts and when it finishes. Mm -hmm. So I believe um, the date that the scent liquidity mining campaign kicks off is, will be on August 18th. Um, and you guys are signed up for eight rounds. So that's four months of a campaign. Um, so like your users, Loopring users, uh, feel free to just provide that sent USDC liquidity into the pool and let that sit there for four months and just accumulate those liquidity mining rewards. Um, there's really nothing to do. Um, and as you said before, when you are on our Loopring ZK rollup, everything is gas free. You don't really have to worry about gas prices blowing up in your face. Um, there's no rush really to close a you know, CDP or get a trade that maybe is moving against you and GUI um, is you know, shooting up to 500. Um, we abstract kind of that whole DeFi um, gas prices right out of our exchange. Um, and it's very much like Coinbase or a Binance in the sense that everything is near instant uh, settlement. And I guess the added benefit that everything is non-custodial. We cannot do any harm to your funds. You are always 100% um, in control and could be uh, self-sovereign. Wow. So that's yep, great. I just... I just took away fast, cheap, and secure. Um, yes. So that's cool. <laughs> uh, can you tell us about, uh, can you just give us a little uh, details about ZK Rollup and like, you know, just layman's term exactly, uh, you know, because that's kind of the power of Loopring, right? Yeah, uh, you got it. So the, our kind of layer two scaling solution that we use is a ZK Rollup. And what this is, is, it doesn't really rely on any new economic games or a different set of validators. You're just trusting math, cryptography, and Ethereum. Um, and that's why Vitalik and so many others speak so highly of it. It just inherits Ethereum level security. So when you come onto our rollup, I guess, the, the way we're able to achieve such high throughput is that we do all this you know, heavy computation off chain in the, the real, the physical world out of Ethereum. So when you're on a roll up Alex and, and Ryan, when you wanna make a trade, um, let's say Ryan, you lost a bet to me in that NASCAR race last week and you owe ah. me some cent. Um, we batch all of these different transactions up and we kind of compress them and then to make sure that everything is valid, we send them to our zero knowledge prover. And from there, we get this, the output is this very small cryptographic proof, which we submit to Ethereum. Sorry, I'm getting into the weeds here. No, but at the end of the day- No, no it's all helpful. Yeah. Um, it just means that we can't falsify anything. And it's this very small proof that removes all the nitty gritty details. Instead of putting you know, 40,000 lines of code that has all these transaction details, this little cryptographic proof is good enough um, or as good as putting the whole thing on chain. And that's how we're able to, I guess, scale Ethereum. Very cool, I like it. Um... Ryan doesn't lose too many bets. So, uh, if, <laughs> folks, if highly you, unlikely scenario you just played out. <laughs> Sorry about that. Ryan. Exactly. Um, all right, cool. What, what we're going to do is we actually have, uh, I believe we have two explainer uh, links that we're going to put in Discord. Um, there is a loop ring channel, folks. It has a fancy little symbol next to it of a ring, an engagement ring. Uh, that's Ryan's doing. Um, but we're going to pin to that channel the two explainer videos. And if you have any questions on that, um, you can just ask your questions in there uh, and get them answered. So we want this to be as seamless as possible for everybody. Um, we also want everybody to get their scent to uh, and, and to utilize it for something. So uh, liquidity mining will be a great opportunity uh, for that. Um, so, Adam, thank you very much, sir. 
And in, before and we let Adam go, wait, yeah. before, Alex, before we let Adam go, Terry Lowitz has a question. He wants to know how to sign up and if it can be done now or if, uh, if, if, you have to, if he has to wait. So user deposits will start on Monday. And I guess the, it's very easy to deposit your funds onto Loopring. It's, you know, you have your MetaMask or any Ethereum wallet. You go onto um, loopring.exchange.io and there'll be a button that says deposit. And you are just sending your funds from your MetaMask or any other wallet onto Loopring. It takes one you know, ETH gas transaction and then you're living gas free. Um, and, and nice. And this, yeah. I, my well, wife would love if I lived gas free. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's where this is going now. <laughs> Um, Adam, thank you so much. I have a car, it's, but it's my dream is well. Right. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> that was it. Go ahead, Nick. No, I was going to say I was just making a joke because I I was trying to live gas free because I have a car, but uh, Ryan was taking it in the complete opposite direction. So. I went I went much higher brow with that yeah. with my commentary. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if uh, if I'll anyone leave. has any further questions for Adam, I'm sure I'll stick around for a little bit while Tommy uh, dives into. Uh, his research on Luna. Um, so please feel free to drop him in the chat. Uh, Adam, thank you. Thank you guys. I'm actually gonna run, but it's been a pleasure uh, and um, looking forward to this campaign. Also, you know, thank you so much, Adam. Appreciate it and your time today. Uh, mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll let you go. <laughs> you guys, thank you. Um, and for the community, what we're going to do is obviously, as we get it, we're going to we always post as much as we can into the announcements. Mm -hmm. And so we'll do so when um, deposits withdrawals are opened up on Loopbrick. So we appreciate uh, that very much. Absolutely. As a quick, Make sure. as a quick community question, um, I assume the Loopbrick guys will also be kind of hanging out in the Loopbrick chat section for Correct. any questions mm -hmm. potentially in the future. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is correct. So, so just like, uh, just like Bitcoin.com exchange, just like um, Voyager, just like a couple of other channels that we have on there, we try to incorporate as many of uh, the team members from those counterparties uh, in there as well. So. Awesome. Excellent. Cool. Tommy, what do you have for us on Luna? Hi guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Thanks for um, so yeah, so I just finished up my re research report on uh, Luna and the Terra ecosystem. Um, and so I guess a general overview of how I approached it and what interests me about the Terra ecosystem is that typically uh, what, what, the, what they've done that's really unique is they not only launched a completely new chain, right, which has all the trappings of uh, it's really fast, really cheap, all that good stuff, right, that everyone likes to talk about when, they, when they're making a new project. But um, they've also launched a completely new stable coin and uh, called Terra USD, right? Um, and what's unique about Terra USD is that it's an algorithmic stablecoin. And what's unique about that is that it's not only it's not only the only algorithmic stablecoin in the top nine uh, market cap. It's actually the top five, so it's right underneath Dai, uh, which is a which is a over collateralized uh, crypto stablecoin uh, that's collateralized by ETH and a little bit of USDC. Um, so. What's what's interesting? So how how Terra approached it is they uh, they created their chain, right? And so usually what projects do is they they create a chain and they wait for people to come and build. They're they're waiting for developers. They're waiting for projects. Um, for example, if you go onto like Polygon, you might see like Sushi Swap or you might see Ave or whatever. And they've all transitioned, and there there are all these multi-chain projects that bring liquidity into the system and help kind of bootstrap uh, new users who are interested in a, in a lower fee platform and so on, right? So what, but the problem with that is then you're waiting around, right? You need somebody to come onto your system and build. So what Terra did is instead they launched uh, two, two projects, one that's called Anchor Protocol and one that's called Mirror. Um, mm -hmm. And that essentially is are the what I call the on-chain flywheels or the feedback loops within the system that that support its growth and will continue to support its growth going forward. Um, that was launched by Terraform Labs, and so what Anchor Protocol promises, and essentially what their what the carrot or the the, the calling card of Terra is twenty percent APY 
on your stable coins. So you can deposit Terra, uh, Terra USD, USDT, or UST into Anchor Protocol and get 20% APY. Wow. Um, and that's that's stable uh, for however however long that they can they can keep this going. And there's plenty of systems and things that they're trying to do to make it uh, self-sustaining and continue very long into the future. So the whole system and all the protocols on Terra are trying to use this 20% APY um, to attract more and more projects, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so they've so they've uh, created that, and they've also created Mirror, which is a synthetic platform, sort of like um, synthetics on uh, Ethereum. But what uh, what they've done with Mirror is that you can you can trade stocks, you can trade all sorts of uh, 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 legacy products, right? So you you can you can go long Tesla on 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 Luna, right, uh, or on Terra, and um, that also attracts a lot of usage for the for their stable coin UST. Um, and so I think that's those are the primary drivers that are building growth within the system. Um, and uh, UST itself, the the algorithmic stable coin is a dual token system. So it relies on Luna and it relies on itself UST, right? So there's no, there's nothing backing it, right? So you can, uh, if, you're, uh, if, you're, if you're trading USDC, for example, and, you buy, and it loses this peg, if it goes below a dollar, you can buy, uh, let's say it goes to 95 cents and you buy USDC for 95 cents then you can go to Circle, which is a centralized entity that owns USDC, and you can mint a dollar. You can get your dollar back because every single USDC is backed by a dollar. So if you think about that, that's only a 5% gain, right? But if you do it at scale, that is a massive like gain. That's a, that's a free 5%. You just go to Circle and you're like, give me $1. Um, and that's super cool, right? But with USDC, there's nobody backing it. So what they've done instead to achieve this, this peg or the stability of UST is they have this other token called Luna. So when USTC or UST goes below its peg and you buy UST at 95 cents, you can actually mint $1 worth of Luna and sell Luna on the market. So that's how that system works. It's kind of like US, USDC, like you're turning in your your dollar, your your tokenized dollar, um, but you're actually getting this other token uh, in return. And now that sounds kind of dangerous because why would you why would you want to hold on to Luna? Because Luna could just go to zero every time every time UST loses this peg, you could just keep claiming Luna over and over and over again, right? And you can just keep selling it, and then Luna's worth nothing, <laughs> and then nobody wants to buy UST anymore. Um, so what they've done is they've created this kind of flywheel or feedback loop where actually Luna has value because um, of the user base and the growth. So actually Luna is backed by, um, by user transactions. So if you stake Luna, you get fees from transactions, from gas fees, and you also get it from seniorage. Okay. So essentially the Luna token itself has value outside of being tied to UST, but they just happen to constantly go back and forth uh, against each other. And so that's how the peg is maintained. So essentially, the larger the ecosystem gets, the bigger Terra gets, the more stable the peg is. Um, and so that's kind of that those feedback loops that I cover in the paper. I talk about those, uh, those kind of flywheels with the protocol with Luna and uh, USC. Um, I talk about the on-chain flywheels, which, which I talked about with Anchor and Mirror, which is super cool. Um, mm -hmm. But then they also have off-chain flywheels um, that are basically just apps in the real world. So they, they have this app called Chai App, and it's, in, it's launched in Korea. And it's basically like a Venmo app or like a mobile uh, banking app. So 5% so of the Korean population uses this app to go about their day and shop but they don't know that they're using the blockchain. So it's actually, it is using UST, but, but you don't have to know that you're using UST. And so that creates additional demand for the stable coin and that just increases the robustness of the ecosystem. So that's how all these layers just kind of feed into each other and are building out um, the Terra ecosystem. Excellent, um, very cool. Where can uh, our, uh, our community members find this paper that you've uh, written? 
Uh, so it's on the Thai blog, and I can post the link in the chat here. Mm -hmm. I think, right? Yep. You should be able to. Yeah, there it is. Right, there, there we go. go. Yeah. And we'll we'll also include that link in the uh, description of the uh, uh, the YouTube description as well in the timestamp where uh, we have you uh, marked off on. Awesome. Yeah. Th yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have Tommy, time for a, a quick question on Terra yeah. Luna? Yeah. Sure. Go yeah, for, go, it. Go for um, it. Cool. Yeah. My my the first thing that comes to mind, and this is just because we had that really long conversation about Titan and Fish, however long ago, um, and that whole debacle was born from a defect within the algorithmic stable coin itself, which just exactly. kind of yeah. forced it into yeah. minting into perpetuity. So whenever yeah. I hear algorithmic stable coin, you know, that's the first thing that pops off in my head. And then I hear top five stable coin as well. So I don't want to bash Luna because obviously I'm not as in, I don't understand as much about their algorithmic stable coin as I did, as I do Titan and fish and that whole scenario. But since you just did some research, is there any, you know, stark or obvious, differences between Luna's algorithmic stable coin and what we saw with Titan, or, or are they kind of inherently similar? That's a great question. Yeah, so that's a really good question because yeah, what happened with Titan um, <laughs> is so basically Titan was a was a fork of of Frax, right? So so Frax is a stable coin on Ethereum, and it's and it's actually super stable right now. And so they're able to keep developing and and work on their algorithmic uh, design, right? But Titan uh, they forked it earlier on, and then they're it's not the same development team, so then they're they're missing some of some of the key things, right? Um, and they kind of use that liquidity mining uh, flywheel to keep getting people in and in and in, and people were making so much money, like, wow, this is awesome, right? Um, yep. But then eventually the whole thing collapsed. It works in the um, reciprocal too, you know? Yeah, they, so, they it, grow, so then there's a, know, they're reversed, yeah. right? So it's, it like undoes the whole flywheel and it goes the other way and everybody panics and gets out. Um, so the, so, so you, uh, UST is actually different because... Um, because it's it's backed by a token that is actually useful right so with uh titan it was uh you had what iron was it uh um, yep. the other the other half right so it, it so that didn't do anything it had no it had no backing there's no there's no like um there's no purpose to have that that other token um because it's not supporting anything where with luna luna is actually the entire ecosystem so it's like the ethereum of terra so you're getting so you're getting so if you become uh, if you have enough Luna, you can become a validator, and you're validating nodes within the system, right? Um, and that's a huge, uh, a huge benefit for the ecosystem. And uh, if you if you're just a regular user and you stake your Luna, you can you can get that APR as well, and um, you're paid by other people, you know, uh, trading on the system um, and just sending sending stuff around. So all the transaction fees. Um, so that's what that's what gives it inherent value. Um, and so another thing that happens, so, so, so the more, the more demand there is for UST, if people are buying UST, uh, and inflating the supply further and further, the, you have to burn Luna to compensate. So what happens mm -hmm. when you're burning Luna is then it makes Luna more valuable and Luna goes up. Yep. And then so if Luna is more valuable then UST can keep its peg even better. So that so it's like it, it's like basically the whole thing is feeding each other. So I, so I guess to, to 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 boil it down, the main difference is, is that Titan was backed by iron, which was basically just made up just to yeah. have value for that specific exactly. aspect. Whereas UST is backed by Luna, which has inherent value because it's the core network token and it has deflationary properties built in. Right, exactly, exactly. Cool. So, right. so, so I ran some stats on 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 the peg of uh, of UST to see exactly how well it fared. And so, it so in terms, of, so I, I figured out like within five percent up or down, um, there are since launch of UST from the data that I have, uh, it has only been above a dollar or above uh, one point zero five, so above five percent, six point seven percent of its lifetime, and below five percent. 2.1% of its lifetime. Hmm. Um, and so, so, the, and I also got consecutive days. So the max consecutive lows. So the amount of, so I, to, to kind of measure like a death spiral, like how long did it actually lose its peg? And the max is only two days, um, which is actually pretty good for an algorithmic stable coin. And so what, and also what's unique about what happens um, wh when it did lose its peg, which a lot of people talk about on Twitter, like what a USC lost its peg, it lost its peg. There's something must be wrong with the design. But actually, what happened with that is the the nodes that were supplying uh, supplying price data of Luna 
got overwhelmed because of all these liquidations on Anchor. So it sent, so they were sharing the same node for some reason, and it sent thousands and thousands and thousands of transactions uh, on like 519, so May 19th, when the whole make, the whole crypto market crashed, right? Mm-hmm. And it sent all of these these transaction datas, and it completely overwhelmed the node. It couldn't supply price. It couldn't find Luna. Uh, it didn't know what the price of Luna was, so the so the protocol halted the market, and so arbitragers were no longer able to buy UST below price um, because there was nothing you they couldn't trade. The market was essentially closed. Um, so there's a lot of fixes, and especially with the upgrade Columbus Five that's coming out soon um, to remedy that situation and to stop that from happening. But in terms of the protocol design itself, it the design didn't fail. Several so it took two days for it to come back to peg. Um, once the the Oracle feeds were live again, essentially, I could I could talk about this all day, and I'm sure our community would love to you know dive yeah, deeper. Sorry, a bit. Thanks for no thanks for no 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 <laughs> not at all not nothing like that. It's just we have a, a bunch of other things we need to get to, including some more yeah, research totally. from Nick. So um, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want to cut this short, but I, I think we need to uh, move on to the next segment. Um, it's Alex. fantastic conversation. If anyone wants yeah. to continue it in the community, please please reach out. Please yeah, do. Yeah. Yes. You Alex. can always ping, ping me on Twitter as well. Excellent. Alex has some uh, more news about Scent um, in case you missed it earlier this week or earlier in the AMA. Um, I'll uh, let him get to it. We have two. We have three things going on right now. Well, I mean, uh, Adam just uh, just mentioned a, a fourth thing, so we might as well throw it all on the line. At 11 a.m. Eastern time today, Scent was listed on HitBTC. Um, so, woo, woo. Uh, if uh, anybody who uses uh, HitBTC or goes over there, it's uh, turned about three billion in volume yesterday on the exchange uh, in total. Um, withdrawals and deposits are uh, are open. Um, the one thing that, and we brought this up, uh, I believe, in our daily show yesterday, is temporarily for the next month or so, um, Scent is is being traded visually on the platform. Uh, under the ticker TTCC, mm-hmm. TTCC. So, and that only means when you look at the order books uh, of coins of different pair trades, uh, you'll see TTCC instead of cent. But when you deposit or withdraw, it goes in and out of your wallet. Is sent. Everything is sent. We're literally just masking the API uh, on on their platform uh, for about a month right now um, as a conflicting token. Uh, with the same ticker rebrands um, and uh, goes through a swap. So we're really great about that. Uh, HitBTC provides a lot of liquidity to a lot of other counterparties as well. Um, So there's uh, obviously more uh, pavers in the road to come uh, through that. Um, Then, of course, Monday at uh, we'll we'll announce the exact time, but uh, Monday uh, withdrawals and deposits open on Loopring, as you just heard from Adam. Mm -hmm. Um, and then following that, uh, on the 18th of August is when that liquidity mining over there with the, uh, big rewards, um, happens. So those are the first three things. <clears throat> Wait, there's more. Wait, there's more <laughs> well, folks don't tune out now. No, I'm just joking. Uh, so the fourth thing that we're doing is we're, <clears throat> and this will get posted today, um, with all the terms and conditions and everything. Uh, and that is our re- TTC, our trade the chain referral contest for the month of August. So basically how this is going to work, and again, the details will be posted, is that um, we'll have the link for Rewardful. If you don't already have an affiliate partner account, we will show you where to get that uh, for trade the chain. And the person with the most referrals uh, for the end of at the end of August at 11:59 p.m. on the 31st of August, is one of our winners. Is the grand prize winner, the number one person, and their grand prize will be VIP um, uh, backstage experience um, at uh, the NASCAR. Uh, Las Vegas race, where you will get to meet Landon Castle, driver of the number four trade the chain uh, NASCAR in the Xfinity series over there, as well as two nights uh, hotel rooms. And it won't be Motel 6, I promise. Um, But the uh, it's actually really great. You'll also have two VIP uh, suite passes 
um, to a fully catered suite. So you don't have to spend the existence of the race down on pit road because you'll be that close. You're going to get oil and gas on you. You'll be down next to the crew team. Um, it's very scary. You, you, you'll get as close as to, uh, except for driving a car. That's the only thing we won't allow you to do in Las Vegas uh, on that day. Yeah, much. you can even go on the track. You can walk around pit lane before the race starts. I mean, it's an all-encompassing great experience. I, I hadn't ever really watched like NASCAR often. Like I've watched a few races here and there uh, before I uh, went to the racetrack in Atlanta. But after going, I have an entirely new appreciation for the, the organization behind each driver, the, the sport that NASCAR really is and how much strategy goes into it. And just, it was one of the coolest afternoons I ever had. And we can't wait to share it with uh, the winner of this referral contest because it's going to be a great, great evening. It's a nighttime race too, but you know, under the lights in Vegas. Plus I mean, you're in Sin City. You're in Sin City. Yeah. Where else do you want to be for the weekend watching NASCAR race, right? I can't think of anywhere else I'd like to be. <laughs> so that's gonna that's the contest. Again, details, uh, everything's getting posted and watched today. Um, referral contest, most refers to VIP. Uh, listen, this is really behind the scenes. I mean, we're, mm -hmm. we're giving you uh, basically uh, the equivalent of our team passes. Um, uh, so we'll take you through the garages and through the... Uh, uh, through the different cars that are lined up on pit road and the suite fully catered. So excited about that. Um, and Landon's a great guy too. Like being able to meet Landon is, you know, kind of like the, the cherry on top of the whole Sunday. He's, he's ju just a genuinely nice person. I thought getting to meet you in Vegas was the cherry on top of the whole Sunday. Nah, no one cares about me. They want to meet Landon. <laughs> <laughs> Landon's the cool guy who drives 400 miles an hour around the racetrack. That's who everyone wants to meet. So those are the, uh, those are the, um, the four big pieces of news, they'll all be spelled out in the community and mm -hmm. on social media for everybody to understand any questions, hit us up, tag us. Uh, and of course, don't forget to watch the number four trade, the chain car uh, at Watkins Glen tomorrow on NBC. Um, Alex, speaking yes. of questions, um, Daryl Worcester has one. Um, I know the scent team is handling this, but I know you, uh, you talk to them quite a bit. So just to get feedback for the community, how can you validate that you have done everything correctly for the scent airdrop? Absolutely. If you have not, so this is a good question. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's kind of like throwing a rock in a lake, right? And you don't know really where it goes after it splashes in. So, uh, this is how it's been, uh, done. It's, um, so, uh, send treasury is held with a custodian. Um, and those airdrops are coming out of that. Uh, the way it works is you guys are clicking on that link for all the eligible members. You click on that link, you fill out your stuff. Now, if there's a problem, with uh during the process of going through it like it doesn't take your id picture because it's blurry um obviously it's going to tell you right then and there i know this because i look at everybody who took blurry pictures and screamed on the interwebs um but that being aside once it's submitted successfully that's it i i i think you get an email confirming that you submitted it maybe not but don't worry about it if you submit that button we get it on the back end i've been uh, checking with the team on a daily basis we've gotten tons of submissions um a lot of you will say hey it looks like it's in the queue still on the marking now let me tell you how that works so you send in all your kyc information you hit the submit button a person actually manually would change that in the queue to like approved or verified Thing is, we're not doing that. We've left it all open because we do that all at once and then send the airdrop. So the first wave of airdrop started last weekend. Um, and then the second uh, wave, I believe, all the way up to uh, where we are now with submissions should be completed by Sunday evening or Monday, uh, the latest. Um, so everybody should have their send tokens. If you don't have them, don't worry about it. If you did do a mistake or somehow we found out you lived in like Iran or Iraq or one of those countries not listed. North Korea. They live or, in North, or North Korea. Korea. We'll let you know. Um, and that'll be done via email. We have all your information, uh, contact information. Don't forget also to submit your wallet address uh, in the MetaMask on that page at the bottom as well. That's really important because that's how you're gonna receive the tokens. Now that is linked to your individual account. This is how sophisticated we are, right? So when you drop in your MetaMask address and you hit submit and it says, all you did was put in your first name, you're like, but I got usernames, I, they're not gonna know who I am. 
Yeah, because when you hit submit, it sends us the identifier of your account. You logged into your TTC account. So I, I can see your TTC email from the sent team uh, and reach out to you personally if there's a problem. Um, and just so you know, I, I have been reviewing uh, everything the sent team has been doing. So um, uh, always feel free to tag me uh, and, and ask some questions. But I will say this. We should be, have all, everybody should have received their uh, sent airdrops by the end of Sunday, latest Monday. So, so yeah, wait, wait, sit tight and wait until at least say Monday afternoon. And if you haven't received your airdrop yet, um, reach out to Donish or to Alex or to myself. And if you hit uh, Alex or myself up, we can uh, make sure we reach out to Donish and uh, get that uh, resolved. Um, if there were any issues on the uh, the KYC end. Yep. So that's pretty much uh, that. Um, been a lot of people. So let me tell you something. It's a lot of work to make it rain. So, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> With that, uh, Nick has some great research on uh, Bitcoin and how Capital uh, Hill could potentially affect ERC-20 tokens. Um See what he's got for us. Thank you for teeing me up. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, everyone should be able to see uh, basically what it says is kind of AMA research. So uh -huh. um, some of the major news drivers this week, were the, the most significant one clearly was EIP-1559 launching on the 5th, originally planned for the 4th. So close. Uh, there's always a delay with ETH, but uh, it happened. Um, the effect was not what everyone expected it to be, but there has been a significant amount of Ethereum burned already since the announcement. So it's working as planned um, and clearly price is you know up uh, on the news along with Bitcoin as well. Some other bullish news is JP Morgan joined the list of big banks um, offering crypto services. That's more or less a domino effect. I think we all kind of uh, expected that. And then we saw nearly a billion dollars in crypto funding happening across the crypto sectors um, from private investors. And I actually read a statistic that 6% of all VC money has gone to the crypto market in the year 2021. So that's massive. Um, that's, that's such a, a that's, that's a huge rise over last year. I think it was like 2% last year and now it's at yeah. 6%. So, I mean, you're not quite in double digits yet, but you're starting to see that critical mass and you're starting to see Silicon Valley and VC firms start to take crypto much more seriously. And that's proof that the pipes and platforms that I always talk about are being built and uh, they're setting the stage for potential future expansion of the crypto yeah. asset market. And I actually spoke about that on Coin Scrum this morning. If anyone wants mm -hmm. to check that out, that that is now live. But I did mention that you know when people are investing in building picks and shovels so that other people can mm -hmm. use uh, the the tools uh, for the market, that's that's when you know it's bullish. Because when people are mass producing tools for people to use, they have to put them in hands, or else they run out of business. So expect those tools to be put into hands. Um, the, on, the, on the other bearish end of the, the spectrum is potential crypto legislation, which kind of creeped up on Monday. So the quick story is that the, within the $1 trillion infrastructure bill that's being debated, they've slipped in crypto provisions basically saying, um, as of today, there's two separate ones. The first one says that uh, brokers or proof of stake contributors, meaning miners, uh, wallets, managers, uh, node operators, node validators should be treated like brokers. And brokers, if you're treated as a broker, you have very stringent uh, reporting. You have to understand where money is coming from, where money is going, the, the gains and the losses on money that you're managing. So this is a lot of things that if you're a node operator, you do not know this information. You cannot get this by the rule of the network itself. So if this provision goes through, Proof of stake contributors are gone from America. They have no choice but to leave to continue to operate the network. Now, there's another uh, amendment that is not backed by the White House or the Treasury that says that everyone is not going to be treated like a broker unless you are actually facilitating the transaction itself. So miners, wallet managers, de developers would not be considered brokers, only the, only the brokers themselves, someone like a BlockFi or a Celsius would be treated as such. And it would free up a lot of innovation and onshore development of cryptocurrency. So right now there's a battle between, do we want to allow innovation in crypto to happen on soil or do we want it to happen offshore? So that's more 
more or less the real debate right now, and it's all under the umbrella of taxes. So if the amendment goes through that treats proof of stake contributors as brokers, it's bad news. If the amendment goes through that treats everyone um, as uh, the same except for a true broker, um, that's good news. So um, if we actually go ahead and look at the markets, everyone can check sentiments. And we did know Ethereum was a little bearish over the past day because of this news. Um, and Bitcoin has been bullish because it is free from any of the proof of stake uh, restrictions, given that it's a proof of work network. Um, it's probably good to just head over and to see what may happen with price based on this wonky news happening over a weekend, which we already know is low volume anyway. So for Bitcoin, um, we have a 42K resistance level, which we touched last week, um, almost exactly a week ago. Um, and our support level is the previous trading range, which sits around 40K. We have a lot of buy interest in the mid 30K range, which is very good in case price does slip um, below the 40K number. So the expectation for Bitcoin is that 40 to 42K, I think it's now 43K because we just tipped up, is the current trading range. And we need to flip 42K to support to be able to claim that Bitcoin is on to its next leg um, of the current cycle. So 42K is the magic number. If you're looking to go long or buy a bunch of spot, that's probably the number that you, you're going to want to look out for um, as being significant to your cost basis. Um, if we look at Ethereum, we can see that it's been trading in a very tight range at more or less a 45 degree angle. So very profitable over the past week if you've just been holding spot or trading the volatility. Um, but we do know that if the current legislation ends up as a negative for proof of stake networks, which Ethereum has a desire to switch to, it could create some serious volatility for how the market is reacting to figuring out the true price of Ethereum given the new legislation's impact. So um, the current trading range is more or less king. We've actually gone up and we're still within the trading range at the higher bound as of uh, my talking, if you wanted to go check the chart out right now. Um, and we've got sporadic order book interest, which is to me a little bit worrying when you saw Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin's order book interest is nice and thick. We've got sporadic interest here, which means the market's really figuring out where support and resistance levels lie. So if this trading range falls, expect the 100 moving average or the 200 moving average to be supports. And if the trading range somehow breaks up with a bullish movement, expect that top of the line to be supports moving forward, which I believe is uh, above 2,900, potentially tipping into 3,000, um, depending on where price action may move. So. Um, if you're asking me what's going to happen, I really don't know. I'm just trading the volatility right now. Um, but you do know that there are some core levels with Bitcoin, such as 42K for a big buy if you're looking for that. Um, and the core level here is just watch what it does in this trading range. If it stays within, good news. If it breaks out, make your decision based on where you know support and resistance is. So that's my market research for the weekend. And I'll continue to update the community as we learn more about the legislation news over the weekend. Excellent. Thank you, Nick. And just so everyone's aware, right now, ETH is now up to 2869. So it's still surging higher. Um, it's been a good few days for uh, the second largest crypto. Um, we have one update that we'd like to share with you. This one's in Discord. We added um, threads. So threads are being released um, in a week by uh, Discord, but communities like ours we're given the opportunity to add them to the community early. And it's really easy to use, right? All you have to do is hover over any post whatsoever. And all you have to do is tap here, create a thread, and boom, type what you want, name the thread, and the thread, can you can have it set to automatically archive after a certain period of time if it's inactive, so that way it doesn't clutter up the, uh, the main chat. And I think this will ultimately create a more organized and uh, structured conversation in the crypto millionaire inner circle and other chat rooms that tend to be busy uh, within the trade the chain community. So we're really excited. We were able to bring threads to our community about a week earlier than the, the general uh, public gets them on Discord. And we hope you enjoy them as much as we do. Also on crypto millionaire circle, the, the conversation has been awesome lately. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. like we've, we've been talking about network stuff, finance, legislation, like everything. Mm -hmm. And everyone has been very civil. No one's been angry. No one's beating the drum of over liberal, over conservative. It's all neutral and very in line with, with conductive thought. So Absolutely. Um, thank you to everyone for that.
Seriously. Yeah, our community is great. It's the best, most community positive rocks. community I've been in. You know, I, I most online communities turn toxic for whatever reason because people are keyboard warriors. But the culture that we have in our community is all down to the members that are in it. So thank you. Thank you for being the, the bedrock of that. Nick, I know you have some, uh, some highlights, um, some sig sig significant development awards that came out this week that worked out well for some members of the community. Yes, sir. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen just so at least there's, there's a reference point um, again. But uh, as you can see, the community highlights what I'm going to be talking about here. So uh, I harp on it every week, but the SIGDEV channel has been insane. Uh, last week, we had Farm and QNT, which did like 50, 100%. Um, and this week we have some other great coins that got listed as well that I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be, or I'll be completely honest with, I don't know everything about these coins, but we do know the coin based effect is alive and well. So PLA and ACH were recent SIG devs earlier in the week that did a zoom zoom on the charts after listing. I believe a few members uh, gave a shout out to ACH specifically in the crypto millionaire circle in regard to a few of the trades that they got to execute, which is a great one. So hope you're able to make use of those. There's a few others, but make sure you have your notifications turned on to quote unquote, all messages for the hashtag significant development alerts channel. So you can catch these real time. Um, the second one would be XCH, which is Chia, which I think the guys along with the market rebellion crew have uh, or discussed earlier in the week. So. Uh, Chia got listed on Qcoin, which provided it a, a nice little price boost as well this week. We don't normally see Qcoin explode prices or have super significant effects, but Qcoin is a large exchange. And we do know that Chia was a, is a popular coin amongst uh, the sentiment peoples as well. So um, please do be checking uh, Significant Developments channel for those. And I also wanted to give a quick shout out to Kevin uh, today, who I know very much loves to watch the AMAs as well as the daily shows. He had a killer trade thanks to an ERG sentiment spike. Um, and I wanted to give him a shout out since I know he's been a longstanding member and quite active in the community. So please, 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 Feel free to share any winning sentiment trades that you have in any channel. Uh, I'd love to give you more shout outs um, a, you know, from the community as well, because we do want to highlight members um, really making use of our, of our products as well. So um, congrats to everyone on what seemed to be a very profitable week across the board. And uh, let's hope that there's a, a few more on the horizon. No, absolutely. And, you know, and not only share them on uh, any channel, but we have the winner's circle channel in the discord, in the discord server. And there are so there's just, Every day, every week, we see a member here, a member there. Like there's one in today where a member made 138% on one trade trading sentiment. So I think, you know, it's a great, it's great to be able to use a different strategy than everyone else. A lot of people look at technicals and technicals are great, but being able to quantify how the markets are thinking and have that just distilled into something that's easily digestible and actionable in front of you the way uh, Trade the Chain does it, I think, you know, it's, it, it's a great tool for traders looking to diversify their sources of information. It is indeed. And one last note uh, before mm -hmm. we head out, I do want to say that Nick and I are getting together to finalize uh, the um, videos that we had been speaking about over the last couple of weeks. So we will have those in uh updated for you as well as we're we're doing a whole redesign anyway um but we'll have the videos available to you before that redesign is done um which should be around the end of august and it'll be a really 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 cool uh all-in-one uh web interface for trade the chain between the academy and the dashboard so um nick is about to uh is about to do some uh, hard work with me finishing up those things he's done a lot so far so really excited to get some fresh content out for you guys and for the new members who are coming across so speaking of uh speaking of great work by nick that 92 percent bitcoin trade that he made wow well done bud Thank you very much. And I publicize that one too. I have to admit, I did go the other way as I tried to treat Ethereum as a hedge. It was a little wrong on that, but I did publicly let everyone know that I was doubling my Bitcoin trade in comparison to ETH because Bitcoin was the main trade and Ethereum was always the hedge. So um, I hope some people were able to understand that as well and, and realize why I made the trade that I did. So, um, and also shout out um, Method as well, who's been kicking butt in uh, the technical analysis channel, Trading Bitcoin. Dude's a genius. And I know a lot of people love to listen to him um, opine on his strategies as well. So 
Yeah, he has. He definitely has a, a view on the markets. I mean, two trades today. One of them's up two hundred seven and a half percent. The other one's up one hundred thirty eight and a half percent. Guy is slaying it. I don't recommend using that much leverage, everyone. But uh, there is something definitely to be learned about when he executes his trades. That's for sure. I'm Absolutely. blowing up that winner's circle channel. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, thank you so much for joining us for this week's Q and A. We have another episode of Trade the Chain live coming up at one forty, Alex. It is 140, folks. 140 p.m. Eastern. So in 45 minutes from uh, now. So we're looking forward to seeing you there and um, enjoy the uh, the the, inter- the time in the interim. I don't know. Have, have a happy weekend, guys. Yes. Have a happy weekend. Bye. <laughs> Bye.